Thank you very much, Anna, and uh, thanks to all members of the American Muslim Task Force for sponsoring this event and to all the friends of the American Muslim Task Force who are here. Uh, before I begin, I would like to make an introduction of an individual who has been central in everything that I've been doing in my life, but also who has uh, worked with me very uh, strongly on some of the themes that I'm going to talk about this afternoon, and that is my wife, Elizabeth. Elizabeth. The American Muslim Task Force has uh, been involved in promoting understanding, uh, promoting tolerance, compassion, uh, much like Islam seeks to do. So I say to my Muslim brothers and sisters, Salaamu Alaikum. Salaam. Uh, peace be to you, uh, not just now, but at all times. Our nation has taken a, a very serious detour since 9-11. Uh, even before 9-11, we had the stigma of profiling that was uh, both racial and ethnic based. And that uh, really was a stigma on our nation. Uh, in post 9-11, we saw America retreated to fear. And that fear was used for political reasons, to separate us from each other and to separate us from uh, people of other lands and other religions. Uh, this has been a very dangerous thing for America because the pluralistic nature of our society has always uh, been uh, had as its predicate an understanding that we are all one, that uh, regardless of race, color, or creed, we all enjoy the same rights. Uh, but that has not been true in America in the last seven years. What we've seen is a diminution of the rights of many of our Muslim brothers and sisters. Uh, this is intolerable in a nation which prides itself on pluralism, which prides itself on each person having the right to believe in his or her own creed. And this election then becomes a moment for America to free itself from this yoke of intolerance, to be able to understand that as we would treat any of us, so any of us could be treated. To understand that the uh, uh, that the indignities which our Muslim brothers and sisters have had to face could be directed to people of any religion at any time if we permit it to happen, if we permit it to, to go on, unchallenged. And so our progress as a nation is really going to be measured by how well we stand up to defend the rights of all Americans. And to do that, we have to defend our Constitution because so many of our rights, our First Amendment rights, freedom of association is guaranteed by the First Amendment. That First Amendment privilege is under attack and has been for some time. The right to be free, and, and you can look today as we travel to this event in uh, uh, getting a whiff of a national security state that this convention uh, environment has become. Uh, not really reflective of the kind of principles that we want to celebrate. Uh, not just as a party, but as a nation. But when we learn that the government is using this so-called war on terror to spy on our own citizens, to tap phones of our own citizens, to open the mail of our own citizens, when the government has used this war on terror for uh, illegal detention, for rendition, for war. We understand that we are at an urgent moment in the history of this country. And our Muslim brothers and sisters understand that better than anyone else. We're looking at people who, who as, as, uh, as Muslims, chose, many chose to come to America. Think about this. Think about what it means to love America so much that you'd leave another land, come here, and then find that love rejected, or spurned, or worse than that, uh, put in a position of, of uh, suspicion. See, we, can, we cannot let this happen in America. That's not what America is about. So this election then becomes an opportunity to redefine America. 
Now, Elizabeth and I have been working on a number of endeavors that I want to share with you this morning, because, or this afternoon, because it relates directly to our endeavors to be able to take America in a new direction. We know what 9-11 did and how it created this metaphor of fear that so deeply infected our political uh, discussions. But we also know that, that dialogue that started after, or the conversation that started after 9-11 really didn't reflect who we are. That we're not a fearful people. And so what we need to do is to look at how can we, we regain a deeper sense, an understanding of who we are as individuals. So Elizabeth came up with this idea that I want to share with you because after, because we are moving forward today and into the future with this idea, and, and we're discussing it in Denver today, to create what we call a 9-10 forum. Who were we before 9-11? Understanding the mythology that's always out there about America, not in accepting that, embracing uh, things that we know were myths and things that were not true about America. Understanding the difficulties we've had about uh, with America prior to 9/11, but looking at the authenticity of our own individual experience, where we experience joy, where we experience courage, where we're not going to let that anymore be nullified by some political game that's being played to try to impress a form of fascism on this country that, that will put, this, put America in a whole different attitude before the world. We're talking about recovering who we are as a nation and to create meetings all around America. Here's how it would work. Meetings like this, where we ask someone, when did you feel a sense of joy prior to 9-11? When did you feel safe, secure, to share the narratives of one owns, one's own life and to bring those narratives forward? Because the story that any one of us has to offer is as valid as anything that I would say. It is a way in which we validate our own individual experience, the authenticity and the integrity of it. And in doing so, we start to free our, we, we start to first identify with each other. So the 910 Forum is a way for us to begin to have a whole new discussion nationally, to be able to redefine who we are as a nation, to be able to break out of this cocoon of fear which has enveloped us, in which we, can, uh, we cannot truly function as citizens of a democracy. Uh, and, and that was an idea that Elizabeth came up with, and we have been working to refine it so that we'll go across the country to hold these forums, to have people stand up and, and, and basically speak to their own experience so that we can get back to that narrative that existed before <coughs> we were plunged into this uh, fear that 9-11 wrought. 9-11 was a serious day, no question about it. But we need, by focusing on 9-10, where 9-11 was the day the world changed, 9-10 becomes the day to change the world.